Do you ever just get tired? Like you feel one way about a certain thing, and you don't want to feel that way, and you try not to feel a certain way. And then just randomly, like one day out of the blue, your entire perception, cognition, whatever the word is, about that one thing kind of changes and turns a corner, if you will. I kind of had that with Tears of the Kingdom. So for those who don't know, I like to play a variety of games. And I like games of pretty much most genres, at least. And when Breath of the Wild came out, I adored the game and its peaceful aesthetic and just overall tone. And just what it was and what it represented for open world games. It was a very simple formula, but one that drew me in, captivated me, and refused to let go. And then I replayed it earlier this year before Tears of the Kingdom came out. And for whatever reason, I was just no longer in the headspace where that very peaceful demeanor of Breath of the Wild appealed to me that much. I still enjoyed it, but not as much as I used to, and the flaws of the game and the overall formula for me started to become a little bit more apparent. Like dungeon design, weapon durability, that kind of stuff, right? You know, the standard things that people complain about when it comes to Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. And then when Tears of the Kingdom came out, I'm like, okay, there's a really cool world, interesting story, Ultra Hand's phenomenal, Ascend is great. These new abilities we have is just incredible. The creativity that the game allows the player to induce upon the world is going to be talked about and studied for years to come. This is one of those milestones for gaming, in my opinion. But I was still in the same headspace as I was when I had played Breath of the Wild for the second time. So things like weapon durability, despite the fuse mechanic, the dungeons themselves and bosses. Well, the bosses were actually way better, in my opinion. But like the combat, right? It just wasn't resonating with me as much as I wanted to. I still enjoyed exploring the world, exploring the sky and the depths were a particular standout for me, especially the depths. I made an entire video just about the depths a few days ago because of how much I enjoy that piece of content in Sky- in not Skyward Sword. I have Zelda on the brain, sorry. On Tears of the Kingdom, I love the depths. But it's funny, like the big versus what's gonna be game of the year argument this year so far has been Tears of the Kingdom or Final Fantasy 16. I'm gonna talk about that in probably tomorrow's video. But you wanna know the funny thing for me? Ever since I started playing Final Fantasy 16, I adore that game, don't get me wrong, but it made me like Tears of the Kingdom even more. And I think it's, bec it's because Tears is a completely different game with a different vibe. So going back and forth between the two breaks up the flow of things for me and gives me a taste of everything that I want. Fast action-based combat I get with 16, while the open world and navigation and side questing that I enjoy comes from Tears of the Kingdom. And just exploring the world and finding all of its secrets, going on these grand quest lines to gather dragon pots and throw them in the fountains or create mechs that you can control. The wild stuff that Tears of the Kingdom enables you to do that 16 doesn't enable you to do. But also, this stuff that 16 enables you to do that Zelda doesn't enable you to do. So playing both of them side by side has been elevating both for me. It's just the type of gamer that I am. I like having variety. I like having a little bit of everything. And I guess like a, fl a switch has been flipped in my mind especially these last couple of days as I uh, as I try and recuperate from a bit of a hip injury because I've just been playing Zelda because I need a game that I can just go into turn my brain off for a bit and still be fully engaged maybe watch a stream or something and just go on a bit of a laid-back adventure and that's what Tears of the Kingdom enables you to do. I love its pivots to the formula from Breath of the Wild, and it just feels like everything is starting to click for me. I'm enjoying the combat more. I'm still not good at it. I'm, I tend to be better at the more Souls-like elements or the Souls-like formula. Like, I can dodge for days in 16, but I can't dodge for anything in Tears. But I'm getting better. And just things are clicking and I'm wanting to get better and I'm exploring the world. I'm doing all these side quests. I'm just being engrossed in the world of Hyrule all over again. Like it, like I was initially back when Breath of the Wild first came out. Like I got past some kind of proverbial hump in the road. Some sort of speed bump that was hindering my enjoyment of the product. And I'm just really enjoying the game now. It's funnily enough, one of those moments that is hard to describe exactly. It's just one of those flips that have been swapped or switched in my brain. And now I'm like, okay, now you can go from enjoying the game to loving the game. I see all these different builds that I can do. I make all these different contraptions and vehicles to navigate the world. I'm completing these side quests. Like the one I'm doing right now involves 
getting the claws from the different elemental dragons flying around Hyrule. I've been navigating ancient tombs, doing my freaking- well, not tombs, more like ruins. Doing my shrines, getting Korok seeds, defeating cool monsters, and new boss fights I'm still discovering in the open world, and collecting a bunch of resources that I can use for Fuse or for upgrades later on. And it just feels like I've scratched the surface of when it comes to Tears of the Kingdom. But there's so much to do in this game. And one of my favorite things, I know I'm getting a, real, a little bit rambly here, so my apologies, but one of my favorite things about the combat system is Fuse, because I genuinely enjoy ranged combat in the game. I think the aiming is still kind of crap, but my god, is it fun, like, juggling through different fuses? Like, I see a pack of Bokoblins, and they're headed up by a boss Bokoblin, right? So what I do is I fuse a bomb to my arrow, hit right in the middle, they all scatter the seven winds, or whatever. I guess it would be four winds. I then freeze the big guy, pick off the small ones, by fusing previous Bokoblin horn kills to my arrows for more damage. I fuse, like, a Gibdo bone to my arrow, Headshot the boss Bokoblin, almost one-shotting him because it's so much damage. And it's just utilizing everything in the sandbox to your advantage, devising different st strategies to overcome the challenges that the world puts in place for you. And I think one of the things that Tears of the Kingdom does so well overall is this sense of non-linearity progression, where the world is just full of stuff, right? Full of different things that expand on either the lore, side quests, characters, the world, gives you upgrades or whatever. And you can just explore these things, find them naturally, progress the world according to your wants and desires. Like say, hey, there's a mountain over in the distance, there's a shrine there, I'm gonna walk over there. Hey, I may find X, Y, and Z here, or I may find A, B, and C. Maybe I find a new Korok C guy that wants me to take him to his buddy, and along the way I find a shrine or two, or I find someone else who's a side quest character that takes me on this grand adventure, who knows? They get bored of the surface, I can dip down into the, the depths, or go up to the sky and explore a little bit. I can create wacky builds to navigate the world. The game allows you to tackle it at its own pace, and that's something I've been really appreciating like this last week or so. Just this sense of non-linearity and the idea that, hey, we have a bunch of side quests and technically quests in this game, but really, go at it at your own pace, do whatever you want, and pretty much everything you'll do, you'll feel like you're working towards something or that you had, or what you did, right, had an inherent purpose behind it. Whether it was giving you more light cores so for HP or stamina upgrades or weapon parts for fuses or upgrades later on or side quest completion or story or whatever. Map unlock. And where Breath of the Wild struggled with rewarding actually going into combat because of weapon degradation. In Tears of the Kingdom, it rewards you by giving you a whole bunch of different monster parts and at a greater clip than what you lose when you're fighting them, right? So you walk away from a fight feeling like you gained something instead of just losing weapons. Oh, I gained multiple different Bokoblin horns. I can infuse multiple weapons or multiple arrows with this. That's cool. I got a bunch of new base weapons and I can fuse those parts too to make even stronger stuff. It's this rewarding gameplay loop for me that I can take the game laid back, I can take it seriously. I can just turn my brain off if I want to, and just go on a little bit of a, of a Zelda adventure. Or I can get super serious and try and land all my parries and hit all my perfect dodges. The world is absolutely filled with different things that reward me for exploring and tackling the world in my own individual, unique way, and I like that. That, to me, is what makes open-world games so good, and I talked about this a lot in my Xenoblade X coverage. I believe the true genius and beauty of open-world games is properly brought to the surface when the game understands that the content of the game should be its open world and that the open world shouldn't be a glorified loading screen and it isn't in tears of the kingdom where so many other games and other styles of open worlds just kind of feel like filler where the open world just kind of there for a few cool looking screenshots but in actuality it's feeling like a glorified loading screen and padding your gameplay experience and time to justify your purchase that's not the case in Tears. I feel like I can find pretty much whatever anywhere in the game. The world itself is the content. I've barely really scratched at the story here. And I've had so many memories that I've made in the world of Hyrule here. 
so many wacky builds that by all means and purposes should not have worked or were overly complicated for what was probably an easier solution, but it was my solution to it. I remember there was this one shrine, right, where you had to roll an ice block down some down this incline and onto spikes and land it into a particular button. I'm sure there's a particular angle you could have aimed for to hit it. What I did was I just made a bunch of ice blocks into one really long ice, like ice sheet. And I just sent that sucker down there. And because of the phys physics of the game, the thing just like bounced around until I hit it. Like that's the beauty of the formula for Tears of the Kingdom. There's no any one solution to the problem. At least most of the time. You can always put your own personal flair and make your own memories and kind of leave your own imprint on the world. And it makes your own experience feel unique in that way. I never really feel like I'm underprepared outside of like maybe food because I just don't bother cooking half the time. That's a personal thing. I would love if I could like stack cook. Like, hey, here's like 20 meat. Can I have like 20 individual meat dishes for one animation? That'd be cool. But that sense of non-linearity and the f idea that there is no wrong solution so long as you get the right answer. Let me rephrase that because... That kind of sounds stupid, though you probably understand what I'm talking about. There's no wrong method in the game so long as you get the right solution. That's probably a better way and ac actually more accurate way to put it. Because there's like so many different things you can do. You can brute force solutions, you can get creative with it, you can utilize Zonai constructs or your own Zonai equipment that you have in those like little Pokeball things to create whatever build you want. And then you hop on, say, YouTube or TikTok or whatever social media is your preference, and you see all these videos of people doing these wild builds that are so complicated, but they break the game. They're like, oh, that is really cool. There's a cool utilization of the game's formula to the player's advantage. I remember this one time where I saw someone get a very long stick, essentially, like a giant log, or like a bunch of logs fused together, and they got to stand vertically in midair, stand under it, use ascend, and you're already in the sky. Like, sure, there's probably infinitely more different ways to get to the sky than doing that, but dang, that's cool, right? And sometimes just being able to pull stuff off like that is a reward of itself, because the game is a sandbox, and the game rewards you for trying to utilize the sandbox elements. And I think once that flip was really, truly swapped in my head, Tears of the Kingdom turned a corner for me, and I've just been absolutely having a blast with the game for like the past week, but especially the past couple of days as I'm trying to recuperate. It's kind of been my comfort game, and I'm going to probably talk tomorrow about how this is such a good year for games. It really is. And we get caught up in Game of the Year arguments, right? And what game's better than the other? My god, it's just a good year for games, right? Like, can we just take a minute to look at the field and look at the variety out there and just be like, dang, this, it feels like there's something for everyone. Such a good feeling. Such a good year for games. Honestly, maybe my favorite year for games since 2017. And 2017 was the year that had two games that are both in my top two games of all time. What a good year. I'll talk about that tomorrow, though. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content, and I greatly appreciate it. Stay safe. Have a great day. Go play some video games if you can. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again.